Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Wrath of the Righteous with me, Frank and Don. Let's continue exploring the flesh market. I'll go ahead. Talk to Remisa, the slave trader. Now let's grab this loot first. And that loot. Jaws of the Jackal. All right. A pair of gauntlets made of a very dark metal and badly rusted. In a hidden compartment, there is a tiny diary. According to it, these gauntlets belong to Victor Svalt, a human who grew up in Carrion Hill, Ustalov, and was directed by his parents to go to higher education to become a wizard. During his classes outside of his school, the class was ambushed by wild animals. In a panic, Victor fled from the class and away from the city, deeper into the woods. He traveled for a great deal of time, having no supplies to sustain himself. Eventually, he collapsed in the graveyard of a city in Ustalov, laying upon the loamy soil and finding it difficult to move forward. Feeling like he uh, could make it with just a bit more energy, he decided to push on, consuming of that awful, wretched ground, forcing his body to continue. He was then taken in by a cleric of Phrasma, and began to reside and learn the arts of a cleric under his guidance. He did not feel like eating the first few nights after his arrival, even though he felt his body screaming out for nourishment, which was concerning to him. Even so, as he went to draw water from the, near, the well near the temple one night, he saw four hooded figures standing over the well. One cradled a dark iron gauntlet in its hand, and upon approaching the well, offered it to the human. He took the gauntlets and immediately was struck and doubled over by pangs of intense hunger. Retching and heaving ensued, but when he finally recovered and stood up, the figures were gone. Later Victor came into contact with an Ebrikandilu, uh, who shattered his, this gauntlet with its ability causing Victor to fly into a rage of zeal. He used the broken shards of the item to dig into his own flesh, carving an unholy symbol of Trelmerixian on his hand uh, to serve as a catalyst for his magic until he could repent for allowing it to break. In time, after Dresden was retaken, the gauntlet was reforged at the very forge Staunton used, and he was for, uh, beginning to dabble not only the dark summoning of demons, but also the vicious powers of Blackfire. He'd focused on summoning dangerous creatures and snatching souls, and the gauntlet understood this. These gauntlets grant a profane vigor effect and a plus two bonus to natural armor to all evil creatures summoned by the wearer of these gauntlets. The wearer summons a Thana Demon. They grant it a greater profane vigor effect and plus four natural armor bonus to armor class. If the wearer summons any good outsider creature, it will attack the wearer. Profane vigor. A summoned creature gains a plus two profane bonus on attack rolls, saves, and skill checks. Then greater profane vigor. A summoned creature gains a plus 4 profane bonus on attack rolls, saves, and skill checks, immunity to fear effects, and number of temporary hit points equal to your caster level, maximum 20. So I wonder if this stacks with... What's it called? If it works with the summons from Soul Shear. I assume that it does. I mean, the gauntlets do mention Staunton specifically. And Soul Shear is what we got from Stun. Interesting. Alright. Remisa the Slave Trader. The eyes of the translucent Merilith carefully observe her surroundings. It seems this is not merely an image, but a projection of the creature's consciousness, while her physical body is located somewhere far from here. Next to the Merilith fidgets a shriveled mandrake, which utters the occasional displeased shriek. Ah, a visitor from another plane. I'm Remisa, also known as Sloft Skin, and I am no simple vendor, but a true artist of the slave trade. My warehouses currently stand empty, but we can always arrange for a custom order. Who would you like to acquire? Perhaps your enemy's son or daughter, bound by magic and powerless in the face of anything you might wish to do to them. An attractive person who once dared reject you. The little brat who bullied you as a child. Lucianire is a city where all your dreams come true. The Merilith licks her lips especially if they are dirty, bloody, and sweet dreams of possession or revenge. Once, when I was very little, Nazada stepped on my tail. He didn't even say he was sorry. But if you think I would ever ask you to catch him for me, you are a truly foolish and unscrupulous demon. I would never deal with someone like you. If the memory still stings once I'm back on in Elysium, I'll find that Azada and step on his tail myself. But what a sweet and adorable dragon, and from Elysium no less. How cute. Don't try to suck up to me. 
I know I suck up when I see one. I mean, probably turns up her nose. What do you mean by artist of the slave trade? Others trade for material gain. I do it for art. Unlike others, I am not involved in the faceless shipment of goods. Each slave who passes through my hands has a personality. Each sale is, each sale is a spiritual experience. Not long ago, I sent my hunters to track down and capture a brave rebel fighting for the freedom of his people. And then I sold him, chained and dressed as a pleasure slave, to the tyrant who had enslaved his homeland. Some may call it cliché, but I call it classic. So, what I see standing here is just your projection. Certainly. It is not safe to appear in the flesh markets in person, especially for someone like me. You see, before I switched to this line of work, I was a humble gardener. I used to grow mandrakes. Merilith pats her ugly pet on the head. It's a well-known fact that mandrakes grow if you water an ordinary weed with demon blood, or if you plant it in a demon's corpse. The allies, lovers, and masters of those I turn into fertilizer are still searching for me. Thus, I conducted my business remotely. In the same way, when I have slaves to sell, I first show their projections. Only after they are sold do I deliver them to the buyer. I'm leaving. I do have every intention of coming back here at some point and killing all the slavers. But I do want to see what quests and things are available first. I know the way. A success worthy of praise. The islands floating in the air are not the byproduct of some crazy magic. It is the energies of chaos that endow them with their bizarre properties. They're not even the most amazing thing that can be found in the abyss. Follow my lead. I can go this way. I sense something. Oh, okay. Get back here. <laughs> I'm not done over there. <laughs> useful to you it's a portal up as it should right. be So that's moving the whole island instead of just the building. That's pretty trippy. Hi, right, Krebus or Krebus or Krebus. The tall, thin vendor is swathed in a loose black robe. He's not a demon, but it is impossible to determine his race. His expressionless and hairless face is covered in tattoos and looks as if it is made of wax. His eyes are motionless. As you approach, the black figure almost doubles over as he sweeps into a low bow. The vendor moves with a supernatural delicacy and grace impossible for a human. He extends his arms, also covered in tattoos, toward you. The ink on his palms comes to life and forms the words, Greetings, I am Krebus, vendor of magical lunatics. The voice of the hand sounds con uh, contemplative. I can sense shadows. Evil shadows that once served their old master, Vyriavaxis, whom I fought valiantly. I had not the strength to defeat. Or this one champion, for he's linked to powers both formidable and cunning. Something inside you awakens and casts a fiery glance at the slaver. You can see the darkness curling under the thin layer of his skin, or rather a shadow resembling darkness, a demon woven of shadows. Now what kind of slaves can you offer? With a slight nod, Krivis points at a group of slaves standing nearby. All of them are completely motionless, the backs are naturally straight. They seem to be drugged. Their eyes are entirely black, without a hint of pupil, and in the depths, tiny blue sparks flicker like stars in the night. From time to time, some of the slaves utter something uncanny or barely comprehensible, then fall silent again. Tiny ink glyphs appear, begin to appear rapidly on the slaver's palm, if drawn by a skilled scribe. My lunatics, magical ingredients for ritual sacrifices, dissolved in blood, fermentation finished, distillation finished. Deposited into practical, self-propelled storage units inside the slaves' bodies. High magic potential. The goods are examined and certified by esteemed Willidus. Approved for trading. I can sense darkness inside them. Not mundane darkness, which is merely the absence of light. 
but an embodied darkness that begets evil and possesses awareness instead of being emptiness and nothing. What cursed substances did he pump into these unfortunates? Keep an eye on them, for the darkness inside them waits for the right moment to be born into this world. What have you done to these slaves and why? Snakes made of letters crawl over Krebus' hands. They are no longer slaves. They are vessels of magic. Their body fluids... Their bodily uh, fluids are drained and replaced by potions and decoctions imbued with energies. Their dried mummies were filled with the dampness of magic, and the dehydrated brains were filled with the mysteries of the universe. Top quality. The Hendrian, as they say here in Aleutian Ira. I'll buy your lunatics. The slaver gives you a false, emotionless smile. Intricate symbols appear on his forehead, twisting and merging, until they finally form figures you know. Two five zero zero zero. Yeah, no deal. Grievous seems neither unhappy nor insulted by the fact that you've spurned his wares. Again, I plan on freeing all the slaves. These guys might pose a problem, though. I'm really excited for fighting these guys because they all seem like a mini boss in their own right. Really cool. I don't know how we're gonna feel. Uh, how we're gonna kill Warlong, the Black Mask. He said he's immortal. I guess we'll put it to the test. Um. Who are you, and where did you come from? Three words appear on the vendor's palms. Krebus, from everywhere. The secretive stranger smiles lifelessly and shrugs. His soft, flowing movements are so smooth as to almost be... as to be almost indiscernible. As if he were not a creature of flesh, rather of melting wax. The slave opens his mouth wide. You can see neither teeth nor tongue inside. The ink on his palm forms the words, I can communicate. Okay, uh, show me your magic wares. The slaver gives you another low bow. One of his eyes suddenly rolls out of its socket. With a neat, gentle movement, Grievous touches the eyeball and returns it to its normal place, and he points to his wares. Okay. <laughs> Why is his eyeball falling out? Phantasmal Guide. This plus five ghost touch quarterstaff allows its wearer to cast illusion school spells as if they were three levels higher. Alright, we're gonna buy that. <laughs> that seems pretty good for Nenio. I think it's a good replacement for a current staff. I don't know, maybe not. I'm gonna mull that over. We'll see. All right, boots of arcane persistence. Whenever the wearer of these boots casts the same spell for the fourth time during the day, the next spell becomes quickened, as though using the quickened spell feet. We know what quickened does. That might be worth it for Nenio as well, since she spams a uh, phantasmal killer. All right, ring of imminent demise. Whenever the wearer of this ring makes an attack of opportunity, then we must pass a fortitude saving throw or be knocked down. The ring also grants a plus two competence bonus on attack and damage rolls with two-handed weapons. So that'd be really good on my main character, because my main character gets a free attack of opportunity whenever someone else lands a crit on the enemy that he's attacking, or threat is uh, currently threatening. And a plus two competence bonus on attack and damage rolls with two-handed weapons. We use the long spear, which is two-handed, so this is probably worth grabbing for my main character. He really doesn't need this. Bucephalus tanks for my main character. He doesn't really need the defensive stats himself. They're nice to have, but not, not required. I'm going to grab that for him. Alright, Robe of Malice. This robe grants the wearer a plus 3 dodge bonus to armor class, and a plus 5 bonus to unarmed attack and damage rolls. Ooh. It can be worn only by a Monk of Lawful Evil Alignment. Less ooh. Shoot. That would have been awesome for Lan. And Holy Shepherd. 
By winning this ring with the sign of Baphomet, you can summon two CR-14 half finished Minotaurs three times per day. They will fight on your side for 10 minutes. However, if you die while wearing this ring, they are summoned two, but now as enemies. I still think that's worth it. We could stack it with this. Then give him this. I think this is worth giving to Social anyway. I keep forgetting to use this. I use the Azada's inherent ability to summon uh, Deva. I keep forgetting to use the Tinker to Free Spirit to summon Azadas. So right now, when we use this, we get one Leland Azada, two Advanced Berlani Azadas, and a Gale Azada. The owner of this Dwarven Tanker is on the Azada Mythic Path. Some of the Azadas are additionally affected by the Heroism spell effect. But this we can probably give to, well... Hmm. This is tough. I'm not trying to sell that. Huh. I'll, I'll mull that over too. Again, I don't have to make any decisions right this second. We can always come back here and buy stuff. But this we are definitely going to use, and this we'll put right here. For now. Like quick save. Because you never know. Raggy. Place for every need. They don't last long, but the price is right. The Cambion, who gives you a swarmy bow, looks like he once tried to split it in two and changed his mind. His chest is twice as wide as it should be, and double pupils stare at you from each of his eyes. Every time this freakish creature opens his mouth, an oppressive goiter swells on his neck. His voice has an unpleasant, croaking quality, but a giant toad had taken up residence in his throat. Would you like to buy some fresh flesh? You can call me Raggy. I'm at your service. Uh, show me your slaves. I can offer you a shipment of Galarian slaves. They certainly aren't in the best shape. Galarians are notorious for their fragility, but torturing them sure is fun. As Raggy grins, you spot at least two rows of needle-sharp teeth in his mouth. The Galarian slaves are clad in torn rags, bodies emaciated. Many have wounds and cuts. Their blank indifference to everything happening around them suggests these unfortunates lost any hope of escape long ago. Sila looks at the slaves with pain in her eyes. Oh, you poor souls. What have they done to you? It's over now. We'll help you. Where are you from? We come from all over, my lady paladin. Most of us were captured back in Canabras. As for me, I got caught on my way to Nerosian. I was on leave, going to visit my family. Wow, it's quite a journey you've had. But you'll get to Nerosian and see your family again. I swear on my life. You hear me? Hold tight. Tell the others not to lose heart. Tila turns to you and says gravely, We must get them out of here at all costs. We can't abandon our own. If we did, it would be worse than scum. Richelai's presence causes a rumble of discontent among the slaves. She flinches under their angry and hateful gazes. She opens her mouth to say something, but fails to find the right words, and just sadly lowers her eyes. A uh, winged witch, what are you looking at? Tosio addresses the slave in a soft but resolute manner. Brother, you should not insult her. She has repented, now fights for a righteous cause. She's a good friend and a worthy crusader. I swear to you in Shaylin's name. The cleric's words are followed by an embarrassed and a confused grumbling among the slaves. The succubus's eyes turn to Socio. They're full of relief and sincere gratitude. A shy smile appears on her lips. Look at Socio being, being a good guy. Seizing the moment and deftly spitting at the method in the cage, Raggy nods at him. If you wish, you can also purchase this little blighter. 
He won't be of much use. You can entertain yourself for some time torturing him. He is sharp tongued and quite resilient. I guarantee you will spend several interesting and pleasant evenings killing this little freak. Chuckling, Raggy watches the Mephit wipes the spit from his face and mutters curses under his breath. The Mephit's voice is angry, but tinged with respect. I buy the Galarian slaves. The devil peoples flicker with greed. After feigning indecision, Raggy finally states, 15,000 gold coins. I won't accept any less. I can get 15,000 selling those wretches as meat. Except, Raggy looks at one of the slaves who can barely stand. With a subtle motion, he throws a spell that slits the unfortunate's throat as if he'd use a serrated knife. Raggy spits in disgust at the body on the ground. He doesn't even bother to wipe the splashes of blood from his face. That one was completely defective. It'd be shameful to offer it to a respectable buyer. Ivu crouches and growls softly. There are not many things that can anger the guileless dragon, but it looks as like the slaver managed to do just that. The heavy silence of the hand of the inheritor is almost palpable. It fills the air like the calm before the storm. Then the angel's voice explodes in your head, roaring and furious like a battle horde. He killed him like an animal. Oh heaven, I knew I was descending into the depths of evil, but there must be a limit. There must be a limit to it all. If not today, then someday. I'll descend into this den of sin and punish the murderers and save their victims. No deal. Once again, I won't accept any less. The goods might not be of the best quality, but they're still worth something. Raggy skillfully keeps his face impassive. He so notices disappointment and the angry look he throws at the haggard Galarians. I will come back to save them. Just not quite yet. Ugly Cambion greets you with a false smile. Would you like to buy some fresh flesh? Of the best prices in the flesh markets. Sell me that method. I won't ask much for this nasty piece of crap. 10,000. And watch your fingers. This little prick bit off a few of mine when I was chasing him. The Cambion shows you, shows you his hand. It's hard to miss the fact that the number of fingers is still far higher than usual, despite the missing ones bitten off by the method. So I wonder if he's something that I have to buy. I'm assuming all the slaves we can they can be freed by killing the slavers. But the method might be something unique, so I think I might pay for it. So pay 10,000 gold coins. Now bring it over. With a gesture, Raggy opens the cage by magic. Notice his fingers have far more knuckles than is typical, which makes his hands look like large, spotted spiders. Mephic climbs out of the cage, that gazes, you, gazes at you with its mean, round eyes. So you just bought me, eh? Meaning I'm your slave now. That's funny. Why don't you just go... You miss the colorful ending of the phrase, because in trying to avoid your retribution, Mephic spreads its wings and soars upward, becoming nothing but a dark speck in the sky within moments. <laughs> <laughs> he just left. Raggy laughs nastily. How awkward. Should have grabbed him as soon as he was out. Here, take this as a consolation prize. This is a Ring of Nahindrian Courage, an extremely valuable item. All the best gladiators wear these. The wicked gleam in his eye. Raggy bears his sharp teeth in an insolent leer. You knew that would happen. Give me back my 10,000 or else. Hey, relax. It was just a joke. I was just testing you a little. Here, have your gold back. Everything fine now, friends? The demon hastily hands back your gold. His tense grin tells you that the two of you are most certainly not friends. Uh, who are you? What are you selling? Everybody calls me Raggy, and the name's just fine by me. I'm the top vendor here at the flesh markets, no matter what the others think. They sell expensive, classy goods, whereas I specialize in rabble and riffraff. My goods cost ten times less than what the others are selling but I have a hundred times more clients than everyone else. Everybody needs a slave. Cheap, maybe slightly defective, but still a slave. Big shots from the upper city prefer to do business with the others, but so what? Middle city feeds me much better. Raggy raises his voice for the last part. He knows that the demon standing nearby casts cautious glances at the insolently grinning Cambion. It seems a shabby specimen has some authority here after all. Besides, I don't just sell live goods. I sell the stuff that used to belong to the, uh, these poor fools as well. You find some extremely valuable and interesting items on the loot taken during slave raids. Show me the spoils you've looted. Blackened rags. 
This rib grants its wearer plus 10 competence bonus on uh, knowledge arcana checks. It also increases the DC of spells from which spell lists and hexes by one. So that'd be good for... Well, hold on, is it... Uh... Buy it to see. And it's a robe, right? Yeah, it's a robe. I mean, I don't think it's worth it just for the plus 10 to a knowledge arcana. Plus, I don't think it'll stack with most of the stuff that we have anyway. It'd be good for... Uh, what's her face? Ember. Alright, Amulet of Quick Draw. Seemingly grants its wearer plus two insight bonus on attack and damage rolls with ranged weapons against larger, bigger creatures. It also grants a plus four bonus on initiative rolls. So I think this is better than this, because this requires someone to make an attack of opportunity. Which is nice, I mean, there's a chance that I'm going to trigger that with my main character. Relatively often. But this is guaranteed a plus two against large and bigger enemies. Which we fight a lot of, actually, so I think this is probably worth getting. Well, let's look at everything else first. Uh, Rusty Dawn. Whenever the word of this plus four corrosive burst battle axe confirms a critical hit, it deals times four damage instead of the normal times three, and weakens the enemy, making it suffer a minus three penalty to strength and constitution scores for two rounds. Whenever this effect occurs, the winner must pass an athletics check, DC 37, or the axe will be stuck, making melee attacks unavailable for the next round. Right, brutal Decay. It's a club. We don't see a lot of uh, unique clubs. Or magic clubs at all. Whenever the word of this plus four corrosive burst club uh, confirms a hit against an enemy, the target becomes covered in acid, suffering one to six acid damage per round for one to four rounds. The word confirms a critical hit. The enemy instead suffers one to ten acid damage per round for two to three rounds. Multiple applications of this effect don't stack. The stronger effect replaces the weaker one. That's pretty cool. Amulet of Mighty Fist plus four. The step up for Bucephalus. So I think that's just worth getting. But watch, as soon as I buy it, I'm going to find another one. Which we can give to Ivu. So that works out. Alright, uh, Rude Stopper. Whenever the word of this plus five heavy crossbow lands a hit, the enemy must pass a will saving throw DC 30 or become unable to cast spells or attack for one round. Affected enemy is immune to this effect for three rounds. And it's just a hit, it's not even a crit. That's really good. It's a shame that the quarter staff that Nenio has is better. All right, Call to Violence. This Cloak of Resistance plus four also grants its wearer a 30 foot aura which grants all enraged allies in the area a plus two bonus on attack and damage rolls. There we, I know that the rage spell is AoE. I mean, that's really good if you use the rage spell. And it still acts as a cloak of resistance, which I think is important for any sort of magic cloak. It's just a speed dumb hooked hammer plus four. Alright, so I think we're going to buy this for Arushalai. I probably should finish exploring the city before I start buying stuff, because there might be replacements, like, tucked away. But this will do. It'll do for now.
So it occurs already. There's Shavaro. A grotesquely fat demon speaks to a demoness standing in front of him. His voice irritated yet slightly sy sycophantic. I'm going to get these sweet ASMRs for the 10,000 delights. Half of 50,000. Just look at how delicious they are. These girls haven't been whipped. Haven't yet been whipped. Your clients will be clamoring for them. After they become too worn out, they'll make a magnificent stew. I give you 30 if you stop talking rubbish, Dionk. Or keep going, you can steer clear of my palace of delights. You can pleasure yourself on your own, you fat chunk of rotten meat. Do you want to get on Shavara's bad side? Do you really want that? The Asamar slaves standing nearby try to avoid looking at the angry demoness. Even in their miserable position, they retain the mark of inner purity and nobility inherent to their kind. Puffing himself up, the fat demon answers abruptly and angrily. 50,000. For these delightful, innocent creatures, your shabby and worn-out demonesses can't hope to compete with. That is my final offer. Stay away from the 10,000 delights. You have your own little morsels pleasure you from now on, you greedy, horny piece of crap. The disgustingly fleshy demon greets you with a wave, his arm encased in roll after roll of fat. Allow me to present my living wares. The finest household slaves to serve you and entertain your body and spirit. They can satiate even the most exquisite cravings. The demon accompanies his last claim with voluptuous lip smacking, looking pleased. What were you arguing about with that demoness? She wanted to buy my beautiful Asamar concubines for her palace of pleasures, the 10,000 delights. Unfortunately, her common sense and good taste couldn't compete with her greed. She offered me a paltry price, next to nothing, instead of gratefully paying the full sum for these slaves. Offering 30,000 for a group of innocent, pure Asamars shipped here for with the utmost care. No one has laid a single finger on them. No one has taken a single bite out of them. It's simply outrageous. Uh, show me what you have for sale. Just feast your eyes on them. The most exquisite pleasure slaves, raised in comfort and luxury at your service. They are well-trained, neat, docile, and stand ready to become ideal servants for your manor. All of them are young and healthy, in a perfect state of ripeness. The demon bursts into sickening cackling, and then whispers to you confidentially. Of course, we, ha we have made sure that their tender uh, flesh meets expectations of even the most demanding gourmet. They have no inkling of what awaits them. So you need not worry about fear uh, spoiling the meat, making it tough and bitter. Beautiful, athletic, and well-groomed young men and women of different races smile sweetly at you. Your cheerful looks aren't marred by the slightest hint of intelligence. These slaves remind you of happy and well-fed sheep uh, grazing in the pasture. The slaver's eyes widen. He starts to speak, nearly hyperventilating. Just recently, one of my slave hunting crews returned, bringing me a most beautiful gift. A group of young, fresh, pure Asamar girls, full of mouth-watering innocence. All of them are beauties in their prime, not with the utmost care, unwounded. Shimira will take an interest in them, I wager. Because of her origin, she loves having her fun with Asamars. There are countless ways one can use such a valuable acquisition. Though if you ask me, the smartest way is to treat yourself to a medium rare filet with rich, meaty gravy. The Asamar women look pale and scared. Even in captivity, they manage to retain their dignity and refuse to let the demons savor their fear. As Dion continues his nauseating commentary, they raise their chins higher, do their best to maintain cold, detached expressions. Uh, who are you? I'm Dion, the slave trainer. When I was younger, and much, much slimmer, I was the dashing raider. I spent my days abducting concubines from other planes for the harems of the most powerful lords of the abyss. My experience, however, has shown me that raising and training pleasure slaves from an early age is a much more profitable and much less risky business. That's why I now own the largest and most respectable slave farm, where I breed representatives of various races from different planes, but I haven't entirely given up the raiding. His deceptively slow movements and soft folds of flesh fail to hide the powerful muscles beneath. This demon could uh, likely lift a wagon with two horses by himself. I'll buy your pleasure, slaves. The, slavers, the slaver stretches his lips in a predatory grin. It's been a long time since I last had a hindering good such as these for sale, if you know what I mean. They'll cost you 25,000 gold coins. The slaves exchange pleased whispers as they hear the high price their master has asked for them. These poor mortals do not even realize they are no better than cattle. When the time comes for them to be led to the slaughter, 
Their minds are not grasped, but their kind master has reared them for torment and death. Anyone who makes a deal with a demon looks exactly like them in the end. Naive fool mocked by all, because they do not know the do not know the knife awaits. Why did you call them Nehendrian? Smacking his lips, the demon answers in a Thackerine voice? When we say Nehendrian, we mean of the finest quality. That's all. Everyone in the city keeps talking about some Nehendrian crystals that grant immense power, but no one can say what they really are. The only thing we know is that they exist, and their owners suddenly become unbelievably powerful. But as long as no one knows what they really are, you can call anything Nehendrian, you see? Uh, no deal. Oh, you're... Oh, you are so very wrong to underestimate my slaves. I put all of my considerable talent as a trainer into their instruction to ensure that they are able to satisfy even the most demanding owner. Trust me, they're worth any price. I buy the Asimar slaves. Oh, I see you're a connoisseur. I'd like to warn you that these little birds will cost you a pretty penny. The price scared off the madam of the 10,000 delights. But for Shamira, to whom I intended to sell these fresh Asimar beauties, 50,000 is spare change. I'm willing to sell them to you for the same price. If we do not intervene, these women will be doomed by the celestial blood that flows in their veins. There's nothing more tantalizing for a demon than befouling, abusing, and destroying any being with ties to the upper planes. We have no right to stand by and leave these unfortunates to a terrible fate of torture and death. Uh, no deal. If you don't buy them, if you don't buy them, you'll regret it. Uh, they would have given you such pleasure. I'm sure Shamir will send for them very soon. Address the pleasure slaves. Don't you get it? You're going to be eaten. The pleasure slaves erupt in frightened exclamations. Whimpering pathetically, they turn their trusted gazes on the demon. Some have tears gleaming in their eyes. One of the slaves builds up enough courage to respond to you, petulantly retorting. What are you talking about? We are slaves intended for exquisite pleasures, not livestock. Our job is to please and satisfy the taste of the most influential and mighty demons, to entertain them, and to be their pets. Who would kill such a valuable asset just for food? Hey, what do you think you're doing? Stop messing with the heads of my sweet little pets. Daddy Deunk loves you all. He'd never eat you. Isn't that right, my sweeties? Uh, more experience for Intimidate. But it sounds, uh, that's a little harsh. But, I mean, I guess they have to be brought to reason. They're fatting you up like pigs for slaughter. They're demons. They eat people like you. Animalistic terror distorts their beautiful faces. Staring at you with childish accusation, Young's pets start wailing and jostling one another. Oh, come on. Young slowly maneuvers his massive body toward the nearest slave. A slender young boy with long fair hair and soft features. With a lazy swipe of the demon's claw, the boy's lower jaw disappears, and blood starts gushing from the terrible crimson cavern where his jaw used to be. The boy blinks in dumb bewilderment, and then a wild, bestial howl erupts from his throat as he falls. Demons wearing wolfish grins crowd in from every corner of the market, savoring every moment of their victim's helplessness. Darn it. Who asked you to tell these idiots the truth? They're like cattle. They go wherever they're led until they see the butcher's knife. No time for debates. And now we're fighting. Against this guy as well. I will resist into the fray. Right, let's get a haste out. I don't know how tough this guy's gonna be. Done. Come on, guys. Cut him down. Uh, maybe get these guys out as well. This fight's not going super well right now. Prepare yourself. 
Uh, he should be able to heal himself. Let's do that real fast. And then summon these guys. Desna, guide my hand. Be gone, fiend. All right, so seals down. That's fine. We'll bring it back. He's killing all the slaves. Looks like the Osmar slaves are still alive. Hey there, Sila. Make your peace. Uh, let's see. Actually, use this instead. I'll remove this obstacle. And let's see. Then cast slow on him as well. I should have cast a spell magic on him with a uh, Sosu instead. That would have helped out greatly, I think. You should have listened to reason. You've crossed the wrong mongrel. I will resist. <laughs> I mean, we need to rest anyway, so I'll burn through some resources to kill this guy. Loot wasn't that great. That is not far. All right, we'll go up here real fast, we'll loot this, and then we'll talk to the slaves, I'm assuming that we can, to tell them that they're free. But we'll do that in the next episode. Alright, so I do need to go fix up Sosial, so what I'll do is probably... Hmm. You butchered those guys. Yeah, so I'm gonna call the episode here, and the next one we'll speak to the slaves, and then we'll go back, we'll rest up and prepare to start attacking the slavers. I know there's a guy here in the center we can talk to that was talking to both Shamira and Hepzimira. I wanted to save him for last because he seemed like the most important slaver here. And then we'll just go from there. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.